It took about a month, but I read Duck Snoop Report by Lucy Ellman. I loved it, and I want to talk about it. I'm going to title this video as a review, but I don't think that I am qualified to review this book. Uh, in terms of making booktube content, I'm more than qualified, because we're all plebeians here, that's the joy of booktube. But I don't think I have the, the literary prowess to pick apart this book on an analytical and critical standpoint. I'm mostly just going to talk about why I think it works, and why I enjoyed it, and, and why I would recommend it to people. Duck's Noob Report tells the story of one woman navigating the tumultuous landscape of informational discord in the United States of America. It has received its literary buzz by being over 1,000 pages and just about eight sentences. Now, when I mentioned I was reading this book and talking to people who don't uh, read books, they always got really confused by the fact that it was only eight sentences and this long, and obviously they're not grammatically correct, and they're run on. And I don't understand why this mystifies people nearly as much as it does. Long form stream of consciousness style is easily found in French, Russian, and Irish literature. I think globally it is more accepted as a form than it is in the United States. I think my personal favorite example is Compass by Matthias Einard, which was nominated for the Booker International Prize. That book, I think, was absolutely lovely, a, a brilliant work in translation, and utilizes this form in such a smart and strategic way. But this does too, and what I find most thrilling about it is that this style, which is so non-traditionally American, is being actively applied to America. And I like to see, personally, how that works as an experiment because I do think it works. The funny thing about long-form stream of consciousness work is that oftentimes when books are nominated for long lists or critically reviewed, people often say that the book in question will be unlike anything you've ever read before, which is aggravating because it does kind of shove away all of the global literature out there that does utilize this form actively. But on top of that, long-form stream of consciousness text is how nearly every human lives their lives. Our brains, our, our conversations, our thought processes, the way that we intake and, and, and put out information is this. And while punctuation is used to ground our thoughts and, and shape our expression, punctuation is not necessary to be understood. So if you are somebody who fears this style, who fears perhaps diving into a work where the majority of the text is just block by block. I challenge you as a reader to consider Twitter. Stay with me here. I imagine scrolling through Twitter, but just for like five hours. And you're seeing disparate information. You are seeing a, a political rant. You're seeing a book review. You're seeing memes. You're seeing cute dog photos. You're seeing recipes. And just imagine scrolling and scrolling and nothing is cohesive. Nothing is narrative. Nothing is there. But we completely understand every single thing we read. When you're scrolling on Twitter, it is a, a microcosm of a global experience. Now, obviously, there are algorithms that uh, shape and form what we're viewing. You know, there's targeted advertising, that's a, that's a real aspect, but when we think about how our brains are able to piece together what are disparate thoughts on one timeline, scrolling and scrolling, that's no different from reading this. So in many ways, this is just something that most people do all day. Duck's Noob Report is a book that lacks narrative, that lacks through line. It, it eventually has some sort of shape to it, but it is all about the constant bombardment of information that we as people receive today, specific to a, a, a fluctuating American climate of, of political outrage and, and trend, and just the most capitalism, and it's, it's, it's so much. And it needs to be this long, and, and it needs to be this way. I personally think that Lucy Ellman sets herself up for success with this text in so many ways, but, but probably most primarily 
in the art of making a cherry pie. The main character of this text makes pies, and maybe I'm a sucker for Americana in some sort of weird and twisted way, but what is more traditionally American than a housewife making a pie in Ohio? Obviously fraught, obviously full of problems, and obviously needing to be expanded upon, but when we think of traditional Americana, especially from the canonically male and white viewpoint that I think this book tries to address, a woman making a pie in Ohio is is just about as American as it gets. Now, obviously, the scope of this book, the scope of this conversation, and the scope of all conversation regarding these things needs to be much, much broader. But I do think it is a persistent image in American minds. So with the awareness that it is a problematic image, it is still a, a persistent image. It is still that Norman Rockwell portrait of America. But from that one thing, from that, that one stereotype, this book does expand in glorious and, and sporadic ways. Operating with a main device that I think a lot of people have talked about when discussing this book, uh, the, the framework of, of thought that is the fact that. And this book maintains its momentum and maintains its form by constantly uttering the fact that this, the fact that that, and, and, and these sentences combine and perpetuate to really demonstrate the dissemination of information in the way that I had first mentioned when I described what this book was about in my one-sentence elevator pitch. Fact is a word that should not in any way be charged with multiple connotations, but America is a country where that has become normal, and the terminology becomes twisted. And in this book, we explore the idea that fact is opinion, or fact is perception, and how full of problems that is, and how absolutely frightening that is. This book is complete tumult. It is absolutely unsettling, and in many ways, because of that, it is utterly cathartic. I, I did spend so much time reading this, and it is as large as it is, but it also is handling and demonstrating everything that we are, as people, bombarded with every single day. When you wake up and you read about another school shooting, or another hot take about a presidency from five terms ago, or a recipe for foie gras, and then simultaneously a, an explanation for the ethical treatment of animals, and uh, on top of that, your friend posting a cute picture of a Pomeranian, and Pomeranians are great. Like, it's just, it's, <laughs> that's everything that this book is, and, and, and it's exhausting. It is exhausting to be in a world of technological consciousness. It's exhausting to be engaged constantly, even in the narrow scope of algorithm work, with politics and, and, and with art and with religion and with discussion of the things that make us most human. And I want to recommend this book to all readers because never have I experienced a text that is so thoroughly examining that sensation and so accurately just knocks it out of the park. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't think this is much of a review. I, I, I don't think I'm spewing literary criticism at you. I'm, I, I am in many ways just kind of shoving it in your face and saying, give it a shot. Um, and I am very aware of that, but I did want to talk about it and I did want to say that while maybe I'm not going to be able to personally take the time to pick apart its prose and its skill and its overall craftsmanship, I do want to say that, uh, on an emotional level, this is really important and deserves its nomination for the Booker Prize. I do think it should be shortlisted, and I don't think it is the gimmick that so many people are making it out to be. This book needs to be its length, and I don't see any other way for this book to work. So unfortunately, if you were on the fence and were waiting on my opinion, I know some people said that they were, Lord knows why. Um, I vote yes. Please read Duck's Noob Report by Lucy Elman. Have you read it? Comment down below and let me know all of your thoughts. I know that Eric Carl Anderson posted a 30-minute review of this book, and I'm gonna go watch that now. I haven't yet. 
uh, I was waiting because I wanted to let my thoughts sit first before I watched his, because I know that he's going to do a wonderful job addressing this book, as he always does. But I just wanted to give him a shout out because we're good pals. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.